meditation is one of those practices that is as old as, as the dawn of man and as confusing as ever. Uh, something that is becoming more popular in our, our uh, Western culture. You know, people are discovering the benefits of, of slowing your mind and moving your mind into a different brainwave state, a different state of consciousness to use it to change your neural reception to prepare your body and your mind for what's coming so you can be efficient and effective and not overwhelmed by all the stresses of life. It's a beautiful tool for that. It's a beautiful tool for productivity. It's a beautiful tool for uh, self-discovery, for when you're, you're going through the shit, you know, you're dealing with it. You're, you're in heavy anxiety or depression or life. You just can't come to grips with it. There's all this stuff going on. You can't figure it out. And it's like, that's when you need to go meditate. That's the moment where meditation will heal you and solve your problems. Because it is the moment of quieting the mind, of slowing all of those thoughts. And all of those thoughts are out into the future. They have nothing to do with your reality right now. They're creating a set of neural reception to prepare you for what's coming. So all those busy thoughts working you out into the future, all of those thoughts about what if and all of those worries and the things that don't have anything to do with this present moment right here, those things get turned off. And then you're not worrying about it. And then you're not triggering the neural receptivity to prepare for it. Those are the feelings of anxiety in your body. So going to a practice of meditation is like regularly, I don't know, clearing out the RAM in your computer. Regularly, you know, shutting a few apps on your phone so it runs a little faster. Regularly closing some tabs in the on the browser. Regularly taking the trash out. Regularly cleaning the house. Just regularly taking care of stuff. But it's a mental, feeling, emotional state. So the beautiful thing in the practice of, if you can get up and meditate in the morning, your brain is transitioning out of the sleep, sleep phases. You are in different brainwave, different consciousness states as you're in sleep phases. And as you come out, you have this gentle moment in the morning where your body and your mind is preparing for the day. So when you wake up and you look at your phone, you know, it's like a whole bunch of photons, it starts getting your brain going, you know, starts firing all that all the hormones for the day. Um, then you read something that gets you worked up, you see something and all of a sudden your subconscious is milling about all this stuff that's worked up. And there's all the stuff that's been worked up from yesterday. And then all of a sudden, by the time you're, um, you know, taking your shower or, or eating, eating your breakfast, you're already worked up, you're already feeling the stress. Oh, I gotta get to the thing. Well, it's simply because all of that stress was always there all, all the time. And it's not like it's going to go away. But we allow ourselves to dive into future stress. We invest in stress in the future that's not even a, a part of our life yet. And then it changes our neural reception for the day. And that's how we feel about the day. So when we can get up in the morning and take a little moment to meditate, okay, I'm going to clear my mind for the day, but I'm also going to clear my feelings. I'm going to move to a state of, of neutral. I'm going to catch my brain waves at the beginning of the day as they are transitioning into whatever I am prepared for for the day, and I will prepare my mind and my nervous system for peace. I will prepare my mind and nervous system to be in flow. I will prepare my mind and nervous system to have an absolutely beautiful day. So it's a way of of regularly practicing your, yourself into a, a state of mental, emotional, physical balance. And there's a beautiful part of meditation where you gotta deal with your shit. And all that shit is the stuff that's causing you the pain. So you get in there and you go, okay, I'm not gonna think. And then all of a sudden that thoughts, running around all the shit, you know, just blasting in there. And you have to go, no, I choose to consciously not Dwell on this right now, and I release this. Here I am. Back to nothingness. Back to no mind. Now, that no mind might last for half a second or no second. Maybe another thought right behind it, and another thought right behind it. And maybe when you first start your meditation practice, your meditation practice looks like this. Thought, don't think the thought. Thought, fuck. Thought, oh, there I am. Thought, fuck. Thought, feeling. Oh, I gotta do something. Uh, 
All of that unrest and all of that busyness is the same thing that plagues your existence at all times in your subconscious. That is the mental, emotional, neurological activity that causes you the strain and the stress. All of these low-key programs running in the background. So when you can turn that off systematically and regularly, you can find your moment. You can find you in the inner depths of you. You can find a beautiful way of being to flow through life in peace because you're forced to deal with your shit. You're forced to deal with all those busy thoughts. It's a practice. It's not easy, but it's one of the best things that you'll ever do for your psychological state.